So we're coming down to the end of Matthew chapter 24, which is a description of the end times. And, and right now I'm on verse, looks like 34 and following. And we might just finish up with this because the, the thoughts in it are just one thought, really, though it describes a number of different things. So I'll, I'll start right now on that. First Christ says, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now what could he mean by that? Because the, that generation did pass and those things were not fulfilled. Is that not so? But I don't really think, in, in hindsight, that that is what he meant. I think what he's setting up here in this last bit, in this last description, is that we must be in a state of conscious awareness of the way things are, so as to know the time of, of the change, the time of the shift, and the time of the ascension. Okay. He's not, clearly he wasn't speaking to that time in that generation. He was speaking to the awareness that we must have in order to to successfully go through the change and and achieve Christ consciousness. All right. That's all I have for you for that particular verse, but let's continue onward. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So, the world as we know it will will end, but the truth in his words will will sustain you through this change, okay? His words, his words are the important thing here and not the physical reality. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, nor the angels of, of heaven, but my Father only. So here he's contradicting what he said in the, in the first verse there. He's saying nobody knows really what that day and hour will be. Only God knows that, God the Father. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right, so, so he's saying, you be Noah, you be Noah, you be in the ark through faith in God. You be ready, okay, no matter what. But, but nobody knows when the moment and the time is except for God, okay? But so, so this whole passage that we're talking about today has to do with the state of mental preparedness and faith. And to continue on, Then shall two be in the field, the one that shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. All right. So, what's he saying? He said, there's one man in the field who is taken and one who is left. There's one woman grinding at the mill who's taken and the other is left. Why is that? Because one is ready and one is not. Watch therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. The one who is, who is awake and aware, okay, is the one that will be prepared. All right. It's the same, same point, right? See what I mean? And continuing on. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. So, be ready for the unexpected. You can't know the exact moment. Nobody knows, right? But, and so, your house will not be broken into if you're always vigilant, right? You won't suffer a loss and upset in these days if you're ready in your mind, if you're prepared. So now in the next few verses, Christ is comparing two ways of, of fulfilling the duty of being a Christian. One is um, when you're given a duty to be always watchful and to be always prepared and, and, and 
um, to always serve God um, in the capacity that your soul has agreed to so serve in. Um, and the other is when you kind of lose track of what you're doing and forget the most important thing, which is your duty to to serve God and to and to honor your soul's purpose, right? So he describes it very simply and much more vividly than I did. He says like this, Who then is a faithful and wise servant? That's what we aspire to be, right? Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So, so there is a person who is fulfilling, fulfilling the obligation that 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 he's agreed with God to do, okay, and continually fulfilling it, even though God doesn't seem to be there, even though he feels perhaps a sense of separation from God, say during the sorrows and the tribulations, right? So, so that person is still fulfilling his duty, even though, uh, even though it seems that God is not there, that God, that he is separated from God. Okay. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So, huh? This servant who is always looking out and and ready to do God's bidding and doing his best to fulfill it even though God appears to be absent. God's, God really appreciates that, and he says, He shall make him ruler over all his goods. So, is this a way of saying that such a person who's united in, and aligned in will and heart and mind with God all the time, that that person will be co-creating the new reality and creating a great sense of abundance in his own life? I think so, yeah. Now, now Christ describes the opposite. He says, But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, <clears throat> and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day, when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that is the end of this chapter. And so, so Christ is, is giving a stern admonition about being always on the alert to fulfill our duty to God, no matter what the circumstances seem like, no matter how far God seems to be from us, and not to slack off and turn to turn away from the soul's purpose and from, from our desire to, to, to align with God, to, not to turn away from that just because it seems like these days are very difficult. So, on that note, this is the end of that chapter, and I wish you all Godspeed and God's greatest blessing. Take care.